Hello, my name is Eggsbyte, and today I'm going to be showing you a new design for Redstone Computer RAM. Now, this new design is a lot more compact than my previous design, and it actually has the same capacity of 64 bytes. But, as I said, it's a lot more compact, so I'm actually going to copy this into the world of my other one, so we can see the size comparison. So, as we can see, it is a little bit longer, however, it's a lot shorter and a lot thinner. So, overall, it, it's a pretty big uh, space uh, performance increase, we're not taking up nearly as much space, and as I said, it has the same capacity. So, this large thing contains 64 bytes, and this thing, right here, also contains 64 bytes. And even this smaller version right here, I'm sure I could get it smaller if I were to invest more time into trying to make it smaller. Now, this new design is a lot denser, so I'm going to try to break it down piece by piece and explain what each piece does. So, if we if we go in here, we'll see all these pistons right here, and this is actually where the information is stored. I have a, a smaller version over here of it. I got on rails, but I have a smaller version over here that shows how it works. So this is where we would make our input. So let's do one, zero, one. And then over here is where we select which row we want to write that to. So we could write this to this row right here. And then it'll extend and then store our data one, zero, one right there. And then we could set it to the middle one as well. Uh, we could set it to all of them being on, set that to the first one, and have it work like that. So as you can see, all the information in each row is completely separate from all the other rows, and so it, there's no overlap, and you can you can write your information uh, wherever you want. However, one of the downsides to this is that while it, it seems like it would be pretty easy, getting the information out of this is actually quite difficult. So the solution that I came up with is to use slimes like this. So each of these pistons will have a slime extending down to a redstone block. That way, what if uh, all of them were on like this, and then activate this one, then it would extend down and connect to the redstone like this. And in this uh, miniature version, there are four uh, little prongs. However, in the large one, there are eight prongs. But it's actually just two of those miniature ones uh, set at different angles. So, like, if we come out here, then, yeah, we can see that it actually has all the prongs being uh, there and getting longer. And then it's just the same thing on the other side. That way we don't have these ridiculously long things because we'd run out of uh, piston push limit. And once we have the information extracted from the bits, we then need to get that information to a final output. And now having like uh, uh, hundreds of different wires like coming way out here and over and around would be an incredibly inefficient solution. So what I've done is I just have uh, one wire for each bit layer. So we just have four bits right here and then that, that corresponds to the, the four bits being outputted on this side, and then I have another four bits on this other side that corresponds to the four bits on that side, and then that all sort of loops together and is outputted here. But when we do this, we need to figure out a way to select which, uh, which one we're reading. Because see, right here, this is being outputted, and this is being outputted, and this is outputting nothing. And if you were to just run all of them through, then anytime there's an on signal, that would overwrite everything else, and, and that wouldn't work. So that's what these uh, blue, or cyan, and uh, rails, or bars, right there, are for. Because when this is in this up position, then that will allow signal to go through. So you see, this signal is going through, and then that will be connected. And we will only have one of these being up at any given time all the rest will be down and which one is up is determined by this addressing system now this up here we essentially just have power going right here and it will only output 
once all of these are up. So black indicates zero, blacks will be up if that row is on. This is, this is where we input our address down here. So the black ones will be up if the row is off, and the white ones will be up if the row is on. So for this one, in order to activate this row, it is all black. So we have to have all of them be off. So if we turn all of them off, then now the signal can go through, and then that will activate this area, and then this thing will, mean, will now be up. And for each one of these rows, it is a different combination, and it just counts up in binary. I actually have a full set over here. This is uh, what it. This is actually an exact copy of what's inside there. It's just out here, which made it easier to assemble. And it also makes a nice backup in case I were to like do something weird with pistons and accidentally like rearrange stuff. I have a backup of the binary arrangement over here that I can just copy in in case I break something. And one of the unique things about this design is that I'm using a lot of slime blocks to send signals up and down. So if we look at one of these over here, then we'll see once the signal has been sent, then uh, this will be set into this configuration. Now both of these are uh, currently retracted, however, if we were to uh, activate it or shift it over to the other setting, both of these would go down. So then this, let, let me, uh, let me demonstrate that real quick. So now both of these are down and this one will go and cause this to not be powered. And then that will just push it down. However, once we flip this back, then the power is activated. This one will pull up which activates this piston, pushing the entire thing back up and into the on position where we can now be reading all our information. And it's really just a mirror image of all that same mechanism on the other side with you know, connections over to there. And as far as inputs and outputs go, we have our address input up here, which is six bits. And we have our data input here, which is eight bits or a byte. So the address input right here determines uh, where we're going to write it. So there are currently 64 different addresses we could write to, and each of these things corresponds to an address. So that, that's how many writable spaces we have over there. And if we were to change this, like let's see, we see that this one is currently up if we were to change it to, let's say, let's flick this, then we can keep going and we'll see that this address is now what is activated. And once we select an address, then the data in that address will be displayed right here. So if I were to um, put little lamps here, then that would allow us to see the data better. So if we were to go over here and let's say set our address to something like, I don't know, something like this, and then we could input some data like that. Now, if we were to click this button, we could then write that information here. We'll see it updates. And then we have that data written here. Now let's uh, go to a different address. We'll see that, that there's nothing written there. And let's just do an alternating pattern like this. Then click this to write the data. And then there we go. We'll see that the data is there. And then if we were to switch back to our other address, we can see that the information we previously wrote is there. Now, currently this design is rather glitchy, so sometimes when I try to do things like uh, some of the pistons will toggle wrong or something just don't work, something or something just doesn't work. So yeah, th there's still a bit more work I'd need to do if I want to make it reliable, and I'm, I'm sure I'd be able to make it smaller. Like I said, I was, I was in kind of a hurry when I made this, so I, I, I'm sure I'll be able to make it smaller, but it's definitely a big uh, size improvement from my other one, that, that's for sure.
And if you enjoyed this video, then be sure to give it a like, and if you want to see more, then subscribe and click the bell for a new video every Saturday. And I'll see you next time. Bye!